Hello! This video will show you how to shade this fabric Dungeness crab using a box of 64 Crayola crayons. This little crab is part of my wall hanging quilt pattern, Another Point of View. From the box of 64 Crayola crayons, we'll be using the purple or the violet, the orange, and a color called raw sienna. This color is why we needed to go to a box as big as 64 because this doesn't come in the smaller boxes. Now, I love crayons. I'd get the biggest box I could get and have everything I could possibly want. So it's up to you, but you need at least a box of 64. My work surface is actually a silicone uh, baking sheet. I got this at Bed Bath & Beyond. I think at Christmas time Costco had a set of three of them that you could purchase. I like this as a work surface because it's just a little tiny bit spongy and you can use an iron to um, tack down your project and then it doesn't move while you work makes it much easier to apply the color without the fabric rippling it eliminates the need for freezer paper and i can continue to work and continue to heat set without doing any damage to my table below and it just cleans up really easy with a baby wipe let me show you a simple way to transfer shading details from your pattern to your project First, take a piece of plain tracing paper and just a good old number two pencil and trace the shading elements that you wish to transfer. In this case, it's the indentations in the claw of the Dungeness Crab. Trace just enough of the outline so that you have placement reference. Turn your tracing paper over and retrace the lines. I used a white piece of paper so that I could see what I traced easily. I came back in and traced over my shading lines There's no need to trace your outside placement lines. Here's my trusty little Dungeness Crab. I'm going to place my tracing and use these outside lines to match up my edges and redraw over the shading lines. When I remove the paper, I have lightly transferred these shading lines to my crab. There you go, you can see them. The graphite from the number two pencil transferred with pressure to these places. Now you can see where you need to put specific shading marks. I keep a scrap of fabric on my work surface so that I can practice a little bit before I start. I want to use small overlapping circles so that I don't create overlapping texture lines which would happen if you work like this. You can see how everywhere the color overlaps you have darker and lighter. By using these little circle motions that doesn't happen. Okay, let's get started.
my pieces aren't permanently fused down yet so if I really goof one up I can replace it with another one that doesn't usually happen but it's just easier to do that way I finished the orange layer for my shading I'm going to switch to the purple crayon and add a little more shading over the orange. I always start with the lightest color and work toward the darkest. Right here I have some of the shading lines, extra deep shading lines for the crab. So I'm going to make sure I get that shaded in just a little bit darker. I finished most of the purple shading on my crab. I filled in the areas that I traced with a pencil just a little bit darker. You don't necessarily have to stay exactly inside the lines, just close. Now I'm going to add purple to his body underneath. I found the um, top shelf for my crab and I'm going to lay him on there periodically to make sure my shading is dark enough but still leaves enough, enough contrast between the top shell and the crab body. Because I haven't fused this down solid yet, I can come in behind here and swirl in my crayon. And I'm just going to pretty much cover this whole area with purple. You can see where I go over the orange. It gives it kind of a greenish brownish cast and I like that. It just adds another layer of shading to the project. Okay, let's see what we've got here. Oh yeah, that's starting to look really nice. Last, I'm going to take my raw sienna crayon and add some final deeper shading. I'm going to go over some of the orange places, some of the purple places. I may go over this two or three different times. I just keep adding the raw sienna mostly over the purple areas but some in the orange Can add a lot to the body so if you think about it that's going to be the darkest part because it's hidden under his shell. Yeah, there we go. I may switch off to my purple crayon. Add more purple crayon. Again, I'm picking up the front of this claw so I can get underneath it. A little purple on here. And I flip around, go back and forth, add more. And if you think you've gotten something too dark, darken some of the area around it and that will help tone that down a little bit. Okay, I think I've got him colored just about where I want him to be, but I'm going to back up and have a look at him from far away and see if he's dark enough. He's looking pretty good. 
reposition all of his little shell pieces so that they're all even and matched flat and to heat set the crayon we're going to use clean white paper towels the iron is set on cotton dry heat I'm going to place a paper towel over my project and because I'm using this silicone mat I can press right on it hold my iron over the surface and then peel back my paper towel when I look at my paper towel I don't know if you can see this but there some of the color crayon transferred to the paper towel that means we need to do it again I'm going to take a new paper towel place it over my piece press again and you can barely see it this time but there's just a little crayon residue so I'm going to press it one more time Now this paper towel came out with no crayon residue at all so that means my crayon is set and I'm ready to attach my little crab shell at his eyes and I'm finished. Before fusing your crab shell to the rest of your little crab create the eyes with a permanent black marker by just creating two little ovals and coloring them in right above these two little dips in the crab shell there you go lay the shell on your crop and fuse it in place. One final check. Position your little crab on your background. He looks pretty good. If you need to make any final adjustments, now's the time to do it before you permanently fuse it in place. Just a couple of final notes in my pattern another point of view there's a full page showing all the stages of doing the coloring of the crab there are also several additional photos on the disc that comes in this pattern so between that and the YouTube video you should have really nice looking dungeness crabs when you get them finished please send me a picture I'd love to see what you did thank you good luck